Now I would like to welcome all of you to our second session. It is evolving roles of teachers and trainers in red and adult learning. As it was said, in May 2020, the Council adopted conclusions on European teachers and trainers for the future, which recognized that teachers and trainers at all levels and in all types of education and training are indispensable driving force of education and training. They have a crucial role in preparing individuals of all backgrounds and ages to live, learn and work in the world of today, as well as in creating and leading future changes. It acknowledges that the COVID-19 has put an unprecedented challenge before teachers and trainers at all levels and in all types of education and training. The document raised the awareness of role that teachers and trainers, as well as the adult educators, have in promoting and developing basic skills and key competences, along with the teaching up-to-date vocational or technical skills and knowledge. Against this background, uh, thematic session two will focus on the involving roles of teachers and trainers in, in VET and adult learning, learning. And as it was said, it will be both moderated by my colleague Vesna Anjalic. And Nina Bujic. Thank you, Nina. Uh, in the first half of the session, we'll have two presentations. First, uh, first presentation will be by Irene Psyfi Doe. I hope I said it correctly. Um, Irene is a city Fox expert who will have the presentation on bad teacher changing roles and attractiveness. The presentation will work on a recent city Fox report on the challenges and support for bad teachers and trainers during the pandemic. Miss Irene, please turn on your camera. Evo, yes, you are here and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to everybody. Thank you so much for this invitation. It's a great pleasure for me to bring the insights from vocational education and training to this great conference. Um, please allow me a second to share my screen. Please confirm if you can see the slides on your screen. Can you all see the slides? Can I start? Yes, it is OK. Thank you. So uh, a month ago, speaking to the Directors General for Vocational Education and Training, I started by saying teaching is the one profession that creates all other professions. This statement, I believe, is particularly true for teachers and trainers working in VET and preparing students for the uncertain future of changing and emerging jobs. I think the wider context within which teachers and trainers are working is well known and very much discussed today also. What is particular for vet teachers and trainers is that increasingly they work in both vet institutions and companies performing the so-called hybrid profession, collaborating closely together. Now, what comes as new to this well-known context is the recent, of course, pandemic that has affected heavily the working conditions and environment also in vocational education and training. Now, perhaps uh, the hybrid profession, profession can also be understood as uh, teaching both on site and online. So uh, we discussed a lot today about the impact of the school's closure, but we haven't tackled the issue that uh, during the lockdown were not only schools who closed down, there were also companies, enterprises offering apprenticeship to, to all learners in vocational education and training. And you may know that if they may not complete the work-based learning component of the event pathway, then they are uh, not possible for them to qualify. Um, at Cedefob, we, we carried out an instant research through a network that we have called Ambassadors for Tackling Early Living from uh, Vocational Education and Training, and we identified the following main challenges that vet teachers and trainers faced in their new working conditions. Uh, we often talk about uh, learners at risk, not having access to digital devices and internet connection, but we shouldn't forget that there are also teachers at risk working in remote areas. Uh, we heard earlier today that the traditional teaching culture of schools is so strong that the same pedagogical approach is used to teach online. 
Online learning obviously requires a different approach and most vet teachers and trainers are not prepared to it, as very well shown by Talis. But um, these are the skills and competencies, uh, trying to, to summarize them in, in major blocks, required for vet teachers and trainers, and these have not really changed during COVID-19. What has changed though is that some of them became more acute, such as digital skills, for example, and a combination of them is now required, for example, digital pedagogies. There is uh, no doubt that the COVID-19 has generated new demands and new roles for vet teachers and trainers, and I think this was very, very well illustrating by the speech of the Croatian teacher. For years now, we are challenged to find an effective way in assessing key competencies in vocational education and training, let alone now having to assess these competencies online. Similarly, an important question is how to evaluate remotely practical skills. Assessing learners remotely in a creative and interactive way has posed really important challenges to vet institutions during the pandemic. Teachers and trainers are going to employ virtual reality and simulations of the workplace, artificial intelligence and other digital innovations to train practical skills. And that was already the case in some countries, but what about these countries that teachers and trainers are not so familiar with these techniques? Well, obviously, all this complexity in their profession and the combination of other factors that were discussed earlier today, such as the relatively low wages and social status of teachers and trainers, which is also true and even perhaps more true for vocational education and training, may explain the important shortages of teachers and trainers in many European countries. Um, but in Europe, attracting and maintaining new teachers in vet systems is not the only challenge policymakers and vet providers face. How to attract professionals from enterprises into the teaching profession in vet schools and thus bring with them the latest developments and knowledge on the sector is another very important challenge. This challenge actually concerns three main things, quality assurance, how to ensure that the certification and quality of training of in-company trainers is equivalent to that of teaching professionals. Incentives, how to incentivize trainers to equip learners also with key competencies along with technical skills. And of course, um, accountability, whom are in-company trainers accountable to at the end of the day, to the parents, to the schools or to the company. Thus, attracting people to the teaching and training profession is only one side of the coin. Providing the conditions and supporting them to remain committed and competent throughout their teaching and training life is another challenge. And we heard a lot about this from the DGAC earlier today. Um, tomorrow, actually, we have our joint conference with the European Training Foundation where we will present the findings of our monitoring of RIGA medium term deliverables in the period between 2015 and 2019. So in relation to MTD5, which is about initial and continuous professional development of vet teachers and trainers, the findings show that countries have made significant progress in developing a holistic, a, a holistic approach to vet teachers and trainers professional development. I'm not going to go into detail due to time constraints, but in this figure you may see a uh, different a diversity of measures that have been adopted, have been implemented during this period. Um, and I would like to finish by saying that uh, the crisis, this crisis, as any other crisis, should be also seen as an opportunity. The sudden transition of educational practices to digital environments in my country has been characterized as a transition from the 20th to the 21st century within 15 days. This is the time that took schools to become digital. It took us 15 days to implement reforms that have been debated for years. 
The important now is to ensure that these extraordinary measures are here to stay. As these responses, though, had to come overnight, as you may understand, they were not always fitting the purpose. Achieving quality is as important as ensuring accessibility in distance learning. Countries now have an opportunity to use the most to use the most effective crisis recovery strategies and lessons learned as the basis for long term um, improvements in areas that we discussed today, assessment, pedagogy, technology, financing, school company collaboration, parental involvement, teachers, trainers and learners well being and well taught. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Irene, for your presentation. It was very inspiring and good to see and to hear that we in last, in basically in 15 days, we moved to, towards the new experience and new situation. Thank you very much. And now we invite Yari Laukia, Director of Haga Helia University of Applied Sciences, School of Vocational Teacher Education to make his presentation, which will focus on wet teachers and COVID-19 experiences and inquiry-based results from Finland. Mr. Laukia, please turn on your camera, start your presentation and the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, uh, Greetings from Helsinki, Finland, Hakahelia University of Applied Sciences, School of Vocational Teacher Education. And uh, thank you for the invitation to this conference. Of course, it might have been nice to visit Croatia, but uh, maybe next time. Uh, I start sharing my presentation and in my presentation very shortly about uh, vocational education and training in Finland. Uh, very shortly about this COVID-19 pandemic and situation uh, and something about uh, these inquiries made and, uh, and uh, preliminary results of these inquiries. I must say that uh, when we have re received uh, last results just a couple of weeks ago, uh, these uh, results are just preliminary and we definitely need more uh, research work to do in the future and uh, maybe next uh, autumn time we will receive more concrete results, for example, about the quality of learning in this uh, uh, very um, uh, this uh, very strange situation. But however, this pandemic situation created like a great uh, 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 um, situation, not only in Finland and not only in Europe, but globally which is like a laboratory of distance learning and definitely we have to to research uh, and uh, try to uh, learn from this situation. Uh, first, uh, one of my favorite philosophers, Johann Wilhelm Snellmann, who was a Finnish philosopher and uh, academic and senator. He was very interested in education more than 100 years ago and his saying was that academic thinking changes ideas and ideologies, but academic thinking together with practical working skills changes life and reality. And he realized that we must have very good academic education, but also uh, side by side, we must have also very good practical education if we want to develop world of work and society. Uh, education system in Finland um, there are no dead ends in education from vocational qualification, vocational education. It is possible to continue uh, st studies there in uh, tertiary education. Most of these students from vocational education, they go to work, but some 30%, 35% of students from vocational education continue either in university or applied sciences or 
or uh, scientific universities. And when we think about this COVID pandemic situation, it was uh, practically overnight when whole education system in Finland moved uh, into distance learning situation. When we think about uh, uh, vocational, vocational education, we must realize that in vocational education and training, we use very different kind of learning environments. We have classroom learning, classroom education, workshop learning, which are happening there in school environments. Also, we have used already or before this pandemic uh, e-learning methods. They are not depending on place, but definitely e-learning is also depending on time. Also, on the job learning, learning at work, international environments, which are more uh, implemented there in work workplaces, world of work. But wherever learning is happening, studying is goal-oriented and assessed. And this uh, pandemic, uh, 19 pandemic situation, it was 16th of March 2020. Uh, overnight, all schools, universities, campuses were closed and this situation continued of the rest of the uh, spring team term. And uh, we are now uh, planning how schools are continuing in August and autumn time. Some of the universities, they have made their decisions already, but maybe we have some kind of blended system continuing uh, education in after the summer holidays. Also, many companies and workplaces were closed uh, or they had to lay down workers temporarily. So, of course, it was difficulties, difficulties for online uh, on the job learnings or workplace churning or or apprenticeship type of education. Uh, uh, teachers were familiar of online education methods er, also earlier, for example, in in in, in vocational education training, teachers uh, had familiar with online learning methods, so maybe it was not a shock for them, this uh, total distance learning period, but definitely we have, um, we have to inquire and we have to um, research how can we make better in this kind of situation. And those uh, inquiries made during this pandemic, there were several inquiries made, for example, trade union uh, of education in Finland, teachers union, and they asked teachers opinion, also vocational education training teachers, Hagaheli School of Vocational Teacher Education, we made uh, inquiry for degree program students in University of Applied Sciences, Students Union, uh, they were asking especially uh, University of Applied Science students and also vocational education students, their opinions. Finnish Association of for Development of Vocational Education Training, Education Providers and uh, University of Applied Sciences Common Inquiry for Teachers. And these are uh, the preliminary uh, results, positive experiences and challenges. Teachers more or less learned to use distance learning methods and they want to learn more. About 70% of students feel their students have been proceeded well. And these were vocational education training students. Teachers have given daily instructions for students. Situation has forced to develop new methods in education and personal studying planning, personalization, how do you call it, in education has increased. And teachers and students have learned how to solve problem, but there has been challenges also. Some 30% of students say that they have had difficulties in these studies. For example, difficulties in motivation, lack of support, they have not had contact enough with uh, teachers 
or loneliness. Uh, if they are uh, studying alone at home, they may need their, they may not meet their friends and um, they have felt some loneliness. This is very, I think, important result. Only 28% of wet teachers inform to have used real uh, time distance learning teaching. They have given assignments and instructions, but they have not very actively uh, had this real time distance learning. And you, this may make this uh, student opinion understandable. Uh, it is challenging for teachers to get contact with some st students, difficulties in learning of practical skills on the job learning apprenticeship education. If companies are closed or they have difficulties in economy, of course, maybe there is difficulties to find an apprenticeship place. And uh, uh, skills demonstrations therefore to postpone to the future and many institutions, they have international cooperation in Europe. Of course, this international cooperation has been difficult during this pandemic. And uh, next steps and uh, about students. Of course, when we are thinking about uh, education and teaching, we must always think of students or, or also what kind of students or what, what do we expect students are? And it's very demanding for students to this uh, distance learning. They must be very active. They must have courage to ask information from teachers or other staff members. And uh, they must have initiative to know what they want and what is their future, future plans. Whose skills to use information technology in education. Of course, question how to learn social skills in distance learning uh, culture. And in spite of distance learning, it is very important to have real work experience. And teachers to use a versatile pedagogical methods is important. Systematic digital ed education. Um, more emphasis on personal study planning or personalization of education. Distance education modules must be pedagogically planned. So distance education is not only uh, the question of technology, but it is the pedagogy and, uh, and uh, those uh, uh, education modules must be planned before implementation. And learning of practical skills, simulations and small group education uh, and virtual reality, this may be uh, the future of education. And feedback for the students, guidance and counselling are even more important than in contact teaching, because in contact teaching teachers are, they see all the students at the same time, they can, uh, you know, uh, contact students immediately, but in distance learning, they have to be very active finding out what is going on with uh, single students. And uh, summer, summer, summer in, uh, in general, teachers managed or, and students pretty well, but we have challenges. Versatile, versatile learning environments are important in future too. Systematic teacher education, pedagogical use of model, modern education technology, personal studying plan is increasing. This is maybe in the future more common too. Personalization, because some of the students, they like distance learning. Some of the students, they need more support. Systematic cooperation with school and world, world of work. Um, also, students must have, must have appropriate technical devices. Quality assurance system for vocational education and training and artificial intelligence might be one answer for this, how to make uh, education more effective and better. Uh, we are making new normal. We were making new normal. This new normal we have this been discussing also today previously. What is new more new normal? I think we were making new normal already before this COVID-19, but pandemic has made the, the development more rapid, 
rapid. And scientific results, we must research this situation better and uh, maybe scientific results we will receive next autumn, especially when it is the question of learning. Thank you very much, Kitos. Thank you, Mr. Laukia. Thank you. Well, uh, these two uh, presentations are an excellent introduction into the second part of our session and a panel discussion. Our panelists will be uh, Anne van den Bulke from the European Commission DG Employment, then uh, Eleonora Schmidt from uh, SEDAFOP, Susan Flocken, European Director of European Trade Union Committee of Education, and again, Mr. Yara Yelaukia from Haga Helia University of Applied Sciences. I kindly ask our panelists now to turn on your cameras. Uh, and note to all participants during our panel discussion, you'll be able to post some of the questions and some of them will be raised to our panelists at the end of the panel discussion. Our first topic is attractiveness of the teacher and trainer profession. Uh, some of the colleagues previously mentioned the OECD 2018 Thales survey, which stated uh, and confirmed teacher shortages, including bad teachers in a large number of EU member states. Uh, May Council conclusions, which we mentioned before, reaffirmed that the teaching profession is losing its attractiveness in many member states. Um, teaching profession definitely faces a number of challenges and demands, and it is imperative to devise strategies for attracting new teachers to the profession and at the same time to provide adequate support for their retention. The ACVT opinion in 2018 underlined that the VET should be provided by highly qualified teachers and experienced trainers who are adequately supported throughout initial training and continuing profession, professional development. So our first question to colleagues uh, Anne and Susan is how to make VET teaching an attractive profession? What are the prerequisites for adequate recognition of VET teachers in society? Anne, you, you may start please. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Dobardan, as uh, Croatia is our guest, thank you very much for organizing this conference. Um, for getting to your question, we all know that vocational education and training teachers are often overshadowed by their counterparts in general education as societies pl place greater emphasis on academic education. Numerous studies and reports provide information on VET teachers, analyze the different policies and approaches adopted in the member states to train teachers and trainers. They reflect on core VET teacher challenges in Europe. They discuss professionalization issues and suggest initiatives for continuing, continuing professional development. All this in the hope that European societies will offer due recognition to competent VET teachers who are in charge of preparing a qualified VET workforce for a better world economy. This is no size fits, this is no one size fits all approach as challenges might differ from country to country. However, I would like to sum up some key issues to address. Most of them have already been mentioned today, but I think they are worth repeating them. Investing in continuing professional development. There is a need for systematic approaches for professional development for teachers and trainers. The European Commission has called on the member states to offer vet teachers and trainers more professional development opportunities. And in the recent years, EU funded projects have substantially contributed to creating learning opportunities for teachers and trainers, be it through improved career schemes, work placements or specific training, for example, on labor market reforms. Secondly, quality. Providing quality professional development and support is essential to ensuring that both technical competences and pedagogical skills of vet teachers are up to the highest standards. Give teachers and trainers a full role in governance to ensure effectiveness of regulation and new legislation. 
boosting professional status countries they have to make sure that their teachers are well trained and that they are offered attractive career prospects by preparing them for broader roles pay another important motivator ensure good working conditions and the importance of well-being of teachers develop good teacher trainer relationships and this is directly linked to the need to build the role of in-company trainers. We have to develop, we have to help and move employers from participation to commitment in apprenticeships. These are the main points I see related to your question. Thank you. Ms. Flocken, can you please add something? Yeah, so I thank you very much for this opportunity to speak this afternoon and uh, um, I think it's very important as uh, education trade unions um, to speak up on this particular topic and in particular on vocation education and training and adult learning. And it was very good to hear from the Commission side just now the main points as many of them we, we do reflect as well um, in, in ETUCE, the European Trade Union Committee for Education. And I would say what we really have to put to the forefront um, of our discussion here is the quality aspect. Um, we have been talking about um, the online teaching now during the COVID crisis being a emergency teaching situation. Um, we will be now looking at uh, a sustainable solution. So the two key words really are quality and sustainability. And what we've heard earlier now being presented as uh, what are the main points that we need for an attractive profession, those are exactly about quality and sustainability. And what I would like to highlight as uh, two important points therein again um, are indeed uh, the training, um, but also the need for a sustainable public investment in vocation education and training. If we want to give this profession vocation education and training uh, or the sector education sector, the importance we need to uh, give it more um, uh, uh, prestige as well and a status. And one of those things is certainly by giving quality training to the teachers, to the professionals, but also to link that to the salary conditions um, in, in the sector. And very important what we've heard throughout the day is indeed the involvement of the social partners therein, involving the teachers, involving the representatives of the teachers there in this discussion in making these tools uh, uh, sustainable for the long term. And indeed, when we're talking about investment in this important sector, um, and we know that companies very often also make these demands to the schools and in particular to VET schools saying, well, we need you to provide us the workers that we need, the skilled workers, well, there's also a role for the companies to play in there, um, to take their part, to bring in their part um, and to make sure that we have that opportunity or we give that opportunity to the teachers um, in the sector um, and that they do give that um, uh, um, funding as well uh, to the sector. And of course, acknowledging um, also in, in, in the vocation education and training sector the importance of the professional autonomy, um, but also this collegial um, approach. And that is so important when we're talking about a vocation, education and training. And um, I will I will leave my um, input here um, and then come in on the other questions with more more feedback um, or more inputs to to further points. But I want to make sure that the, the main aspects really are the one of quality and sustainability and the involvement of the social partners of the key players in addressing this topic of the attractiveness of the profession. Thank you. Thank you both for your uh, first interventions. Just a kind request to all panelists. We have to try to keep to the uh, timing that we have. So our next, next question is for uh, Ms. Schmidt. Um, which existing competences should be reaffirmed and which are the new competences when we look at vet teachers and trainers in adult learning, and especially when we take a look at this in the light of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, thank you, uh, Nino. Thank you, everyone, for the invitation to contribute uh, to this very important event. And I'm actually very happy that this takes place and also this panel, uh, as I used to teach in VET myself, but not as a 
vet specialist, but actually as the odd general education person in uh, the vet sector. Um, your question is actually very challenging because I don't think it's about kind of like in a way discarding something um, in terms of comp teacher competences. Uh, it's an evolving thing and we are sort of uh, reinforcing and adding bits on, but it doesn't mean that we don't need uh, the set of competences that we've highlighted in several reports earlier uh, that we can neglect them. So um, I think one of the issues that we tend to forget or are not able to cover is that yes, there is a set of competences that any teacher needs. But then, especially in the vet sector, we have the very, very different groups of teachers and trainers. Uh, those that, like me, came from the general education sector and were teaching general education subjects within vet. And then the, the specialists that uh, teach theory and that teach practice and where the, the sectors have their own specificities and their own needs. Um, so actually one of the competence uh, that becomes increasingly important, I think, is also to collaborate across the different subject areas, the interdisciplinary approach, which is actually um, more difficult or more challenging. I wouldn't say difficult, but challenging and even interesting because it, it brings together people of very, very different uh, backgrounds. And so also we, uh, I sometimes say still we as teachers, although I haven't been teaching for quite a while, um, the competence needs to be there to, to communicate and to collaborate with our different backgrounds and also within our setting and outside the vet uh, school setting, for instance, or outside the company setting, because uh, the uh, teachers and trainers need to collaborate. But as was pointed out, for instance, before, uh, there are very others, uh, various other partners that come into play, like the other people in the companies or like social partners or like um, teachers from other sectors like higher education or in the um, more adult learning sector. So I think this is a very important issue at uh, this sort of peer learning that was uh, also uh, mentioned before and the cooperation. We cannot we cannot repeat enough again the pedagogical aspects, especially for those who do not come with a sort of professional teaching background. Um, and, and there are various ways to do this, and I think it still needs um, kind of like underlining that this is important. Uh, also in the context of the learning outcomes approach, which I know that has been adopted in many countries, but it also puts teachers in a, in a difficult situation because with uh, school autonomy versus centralized, uh, I don't know, exams or something, uh, teachers need on the one hand to adapt or to shape their curricula uh, and, and teach according to the, to the learning outcomes approach. Then the question is whether the assessment is already or the exam assignments are already sort of uh, developed in the same way. Um, another in, in aspect that I would like to, to mention is not just only this blend of digital and pedagogical skills, which we have mentioned, um, but also the creation of purposeful content, the selection of what's used for my specific subject area, for my sector. Um, and because, and not every country, you know, like yours, has actually offered such a good platform and developed such content matter uh, for people teaching in VET. So a lot of teachers might have to create still their own VET content. So this is an issue. Um, thinking of not only the pandemic, but also what, what it has accelerated is the greening skills. The greening skills and also the need to, to work with more heterogeneous working groups because the massive upskilling and reskilling um, that we need, that we face, actually means that more and more teachers will have also to deal with adults and help adults in, in developing their skills. So I think this is a whole package actually. Yes. Um, Thank and you. Uh, I would like to leave it at that for the time being. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Eleonora. This brings us to this, our second topic. It is red and adult learning teachers and trainers between schools and companies. A cooperation and partnership between vet schools and labor market stakeholders are considered 
essential for ensuring web quality and relevance. Web teacher competencies does include pedagogical didactic competencies as well as industry relevant competencies. Above mentioned council conclu conclusions state there may be an increase in the need for hybrid model uh, teachers and trainers who work in both both institutions and companies. So, Miss uh, Kia, the question is to you. Uh, how to ensure uh, the connection between vet teachers with technological development in their core profession. We are very sorry, but we have to show, uh, to move forward because we are running out of the time. So please, um, Mr. Lauki, the question for you. All right, very shortly. Of course, it is the question of teacher education and uh, qualification requirements for wet teachers or teachers working there in vocational education tra training sectors. I think these requirements should include three requirements. First, degree studies in teacher, teacher's own field. Second, work experience in world of work where teachers have real skills and knowledge what the modern world of work is going on. And third, teacher pedagogical studies. Also, every now and then, Teachers should have possibilities for on the job learning periods where they could upskill their uh, 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 um, substance skills and technology. Uh, also, in general, we, however, must understand that world of work is changing so rapidly and technology is changing so rapidly that it is very difficult for one teacher to know everything about everything. Uh, and uh, it is important that teachers, however, have network so that they can guide their students to find the most recent information and skills and competencies. And uh, also collaboration with the college uh, in institutions and also collaboration with other uh, specialists in world of work is, is especially important. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lokia. And now question for Ms. Susan. How to straighten the ties between wet schools and companies? Yeah, thank you very much. Well, so I think how to strengthen the ties between the vet schools and uh, the companies. I mentioned earlier already that there's also a role for the companies to play and to um, uh, support the training in particular of, of teachers. Um, and also, of course, when we talk about training, we there is, of course, the initial teacher training to become a teacher and to, to train. Um, but then what often is forgotten and where companies do play an important role as well is throughout the career of uh, the vet teachers um, uh, to, to uh, work together with the schools to have a continuous professional training because the technology you will be working on today will not be the technology in two years or in, in uh, further years to come. So that is a very crucial point to work together. But also we were talking about pedagogy early and I know we will also be addressing it later. The importance um, of this diversity that we find in the schools is also reflected in the companies. So it's the social skills that the, the um, students in the vet schools can learn and can acquire um, and that you need to prepare and it's the teachers who help the students to prepare for that. So you need also to be addressing uh, this aspect of equality, um, the aspect of diversity, um, the aspect um, of of uh, yeah innovativeness, uh, make uh, this creation um, and the motivation. That's all that happens in the schools, and it's very important that the companies work there together also with the schools because uh, you are, will be interested to have a creative uh, uh, awake uh, person uh, coming out of the schools who who is able to to work and join your company later on. So I think that's very important. And one aspect that is important for us as social partners as well, because we see more and more ICT tools are being used. The solution in itself is not using ICT. It's one of the many tools that can be helpful, but it's not per se the solution. And uh, we will not find the solution only in public private partnerships uh, where we have private funds coming into the public um, sector of education. We need a combination um, and we need a very strong commitment 
from the public sector also into education and in particular into this crucial aspect um, uh, a sector of education because we will be seeing after this crisis and we can see that already and it's been addressed we will be definitely facing a period where unemployment will be on the rise and we will need upskilling and reskilling and it is this sector the vocational education and training sector that will be um, pr providing a solution amongst so many and so we need good funding here to actually uh, give an, a reply to people who are already well advanced in their career but also to the young people who are coming into this, this career and uh, we'll discuss further thank you <coughs> Thank you. Uh, the topic of this conference and the focus of Croatian presidency have been teachers and trainers. And one of the most important aspects of teachers and trainers is their continuous professional development. The mentioned uh, council conclusion speaks a lot and encourages further developments of continuous professional development and also speaks uh, about well-being of teachers. So, Ms. van den Bolke, how to make web teachers continuous professional development relevant? What are the barriers? And um, are uh, uh, continuous professional development policies based on established standards and competencies for their teachers? Please turn on your mic. Yeah. Turn on your mic. Sorry, yeah. Um, committed and competent teachers and trainers, they are key to ensuring labor market relevance and quality of that in Europe. They are the human factor responsible for familiarizing pupils with work challenges and labor market, market needs and for implementing new curricula or work based learning schemes for apprentices or trainees and also for applying the European tools. The COVID-19 pandemic, the situation is proof that digital skills are gaining in importance. The challenges related to education now need urgent, concrete, fair and innovative solutions. All online service carried out in the last weeks indicate an appetite for solutions at European, even at global level, as regards digital learning for education, also in the area of vocational education and training. However, the pandemic has not radically changed the challenges of teachers and trainers in work-based learning already identified, but they have become more acute. And here I'm referring to a publication from the Education and Training 2020 Working Group on VET from 2018, Teachers and Trainers Matter, How to Support Them in High Performance Apprenticeships and Work-Based Learning. The experts of that working group presented 12 policy pointers to support teachers and trainers. And today we can say that all of them remain relevant but most of them have become more urgent. The policy pointers have been grouped into four clusters and they have a vital role to play successfully supporting teachers and trainers. They talk about specifying the roles and responsibilities, strengthening the professional development of teachers, fostering collaboration, equipping for key challenges. You see, we are not inventing new things. We were already aware of all these challenges. But as different countries are at different stages with respect to established standards, a development cycle in which there is a continuous process of development and review of the policy initiatives is integrated. So I would recommend to have a look at this very interesting publication, which is still very relevant today. Some examples of the barriers that are included in this unclear responsibilities for the teachers. No clear quality standards have been defined. No structured continuous dialogue between teachers and trainers has been put in place or no support for cooperation. No involvement of trainers in assessment. No recognition. Recognition could be done, for example, by innovation awards. No structured training approach. Lack of cooperation at all level, whether it's regional, local, national, European and beyond. Lack of internet opportunities. And I could go on like that, but many Thank of you. these things have already been mentioned, so I stop here. Thank you. Thank you.
you very much. Uh, this brings us to our last topic. It's vocational pedagogy. So vocational pedagogy enables the development of tools and models that can help teachers efficiently coordinate teaching methods with their students' needs and the context in which they work, particularly the integration of teaching and work-based learning as the most important feature of that. So recent COVID-19 crisis has shown a necess necessity of use of ICT in VET for distance and to a large extent virtual teaching. However, use of ICT creates many new possibilities for vocational pedagogy focused on the students. So a question for Mr. Laukia, which pedagogy competences are necessary for successful teaching and uh, uh, which other competences of VET teachers influence the success of teaching. Yeah, of course, in addition, that teacher is a specialist in his or her own field. This competence based education is putting emphasis on versatile learning environments. That is the reason teachers should have skills and competences to use very versatile pedagogical methods. Classroom education, distance learning, workshop environments, international environments. Also, teachers should have skills and competencies to meet different kind of learners and to support their learning. Uh, all students should make their degree and uh, this is of course a challenge for teachers because they meet very different kind of learners and uh, that's why they should also uh, uh, receive support from other specialists in the area of education when it is a question of teaching. In general, teachers should use uh, student-centered pedagogical methods where student is an active actor in learning process and uh, teacher is inspiring, motivating, supporting and guiding the learning process. Also, a uh, teacher must have assessment skills because uh, skills and competencies can be reached in very many uh, learning environments, but a teacher must have assessment skills to assess <coughs> what the students really learn and what they have to learn more. Of course, the teacher should have social skills for collaboration. This is very important. Collaboration with colleagues and representatives from world of work. And uh, especially this competence-based education puts emphasis uh, on, on, on facilitating and assessment skills. But when we are having rapid change in our society and world of work, ethical knowledge knowledge of sustainability in economy and even more are even more important today or especially in the future. And we must re remember that in vocational education training, we of course educate skilled workers, but also active citizens of the society. Thank you. Uh, with, uh, with this, we came to the end of our uh, foreseen uh, topics. However, we had some interesting questions in the chat from the participants. And there is uh, one uh, underlying topic going through many of the questions. That is the uh, specific position of uh, VET students uh, in the COVID crisis, particularly uh, related to the work-based learning. So the question to uh, some of you, maybe if uh, Ms. Uh, Schmidt and Ms. Locken could, could answer, how to address the work-based learning in the context of uh, COVID-19 epidemic and in the case if in the autumn the uh, problems continue? I, I, can, I can start on coming on, on this question. So yes, in, yeah, in, indeed, I wanted to bring this up also as a as a challenge now at the end of, of this uh, session, indeed, 
um, because what we have seen, we've got examples from some of our member organizations in various countries. And I know, for example, from Slovenia, this was one of the issues raised that, of course, um, we have seen that in some countries or in some courses um, that the, pra um, the practical part of the training was put aside for or on hold for the time being. Um, some were put into, say, uh, uh, like, like uh, online tools with videos and so on, but the really practical part where you need to have your hands on that was um, put on hold. And instead, we see that in some uh, vet schools, uh, the um, teaching, the the um, uh, the technical or the theory aspect already from the next year was actually taken now into the coursework, and so modules have been have been shifted. Um, and so that requires a huge adaptation for the September um, uh, school start again or for the next how the modules then in, in, in VET are being uh, adapted. And because indeed there are parts and in particular in vocation education and training that are um, hands on and they have to be hands on. Um, think of the of the medical um, uh, um, sector, health sector, which has been so crucial now during this pandemic. Um, it is important that people know how to really uh, uh, do all these uh, uh, little and, and uh, fine uh, hand uh, working uh, uh, tasks. And um, so these are really crucial aspects that you cannot learn um, by watching a video or by learning the theory. Um, so that is crucial that we adapt that and it's important for the students um, that they don't lose that time, but that they actually are given the chance to learn this um, and that um, uh, this is taken into account. Also, when you look at um, uh, the uh, uh, studentship or the um, support that is given to students in loans and so on, that this is taken into account. Thank um, you. And it's yes, uh, uh, it, it would uh, be sorry. To add, uh, something to what was said. Yeah, I, I could uh, add a little bit. I think also from the discussions we had with the directors general for vocational education and training, and we learned that in some countries, and also we saw it already before when looking at uh, how our country is actually ready for 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 what has now accelerated in terms of. Um, using uh, ICT and so on, supported learning, uh, to to have uh, better, uh, to have close relationships with companies, and companies have actually uh, come forward uh, offering their simulation um, software or videos or whatever, and uh, other materials, so that they material that they use themselves when training their staff, and that could be helpful, and it should not just be, or also that. Um, uh, some publishers have offered software that normally would only be available, uh, you would need to purchase and they have offered it for free. So if this could be sustained, that could actually help also in case uh, there is a similar situation, at least for some of the sectors in uh, autumn, because we, we also have to bear in mind the practical thing. I think um, uh, Yari can, can uh, um, confirm, not in all countries and not in all sectors, actually did uh, apprentices have to stop their, their practice or vets uh, learners in general their internships in enterprises. Thank very you. shortly, very shortly we have had difficulties especially in service sector, maybe um, tourism and the transportation but not so much in industry and when it is the question of digitalization we must know that also world of work is changing and also there in world of work they are using digital methods and vocational education must face this challenge and maybe in the future we can use more simulations and maybe this virtual reality which more or less make learning also practical skills quicker. Thank you very much to all of you. We had to uh, come to the end of this our session, so we would like to thank all our speakers, panelists and participants, because I, I know that maybe for that we need whole, whole conference to deal with all these issues, but okay, for now we are done. Thank you. Thank you.